And with those three dark days, a thing of the past, we can get back at it here at Gulfstream Park on a Thursday afternoon. The man next to me, that's right, Ron Nicoletti, rubbing his palms, ready to roll, <laughs> fresh off the layoff for another four-day racing week. Jason Blewett alongside Ronnie, and uh, what's going on in your world? Well, what's going on in my world, it was raining real hard when I was driving to the track today, so I had to drive sort of like this. So we're going to start today with that <laughs> sloppy main track and the races will be taken off the turf this afternoon. This is really, for the most part, during the summer meet, uncharted territory for us. We just, we've been so lucky. It's been hot and it's been sunny, but we just haven't had much rain. We've been very blessed in the Mother Nature department. But today, again, sloppy and off the turf, as Ronnie mentioned. Got 10 races beginning a little after 1.15, and that'll set us up for a run, of course, into the weekend that continues tomorrow with the later-than-usual post and a Friday Beat the expert. I am oh, up. Look at that pose. He's ready. And uh, you, you won last week, I believe. Well, the last time I was Wait, on. Last so time long ago. I think I had uh, five or six winning favorites. Lest anyone tell you <laughs> there were no favorites that won on that card that I won beat the expert. Uh, we're, we're always open and honest here on Gulfstream today. I think there were around five or six. And yeah. uh, that way we, uh, we gave out no uh, Gulfstream Park polos that, that weekend. Win is a win. Yeah, wins a win. We'll take it. Of course, you can sign up and play for free. And I think that's the best thing about that Friday Beat the Expert, which we have weekly here at Gulfstream Park. It's just neat seeing everybody engage the fans, some people talking smack on Twitter and whatnot. But sign up for free over at our Facebook page and get involved on the Twilight Friday card. And again, with that Twilight Friday just about upon us, we'll start a little later than usual, a little after 2.15 p.m., the live music, the happy hour specials, you really can't go wrong. And the good news, Ronnie, the forecast looks like it's going to clear up and it'll be a wonderful weekend. Well, they always say in South Florida, you don't like the weather? Wait a half hour. Exactly. <laughs> and I have quickly learned that for the most part. In fact, I am uh, turning into a Floridian. Like you said, every time there's a dark cloud in the sky, I go, hey, Ronnie, it looks like it's uh, rains a little westerly of us. Everybody's part weatherman in South Florida. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. It's good to be here though and certainly we're happy to have your company on this a Thursday afternoon of Gulfstream Park and we'll give you a little rundown as far as what's on tap today concerning our multi-race wagers a sloppy and no turf but that won't deter us taking a shot in the early pick five that begins in race number one race number two because you need a minimum of seven starters we got the old five pack in the first today race number two has at least seven and that means that's where the dollar rolling super high five begins yeah and over three thousand six hundred dollars in that pool so they'll be betting in it now rainbow six kicks in race number five and that again is starting to build over seventy one thousand dollars i'm thinking it's going to be well over a hundred and you can get that for a 20 cent wager. Love it. You'll be giving out a ticket a bit later in the broadcast. And of course, down the road in race number six. Second half of this racing afternoon at Gulfstream Park. We'll get into the opening leg of the late pick five. So without further ado, we will dive into the program. And again, you've got that five pack, a field of five after scratches in today's first race. A $16,000 three and up off the turf. Seven furlong claiming race. I would imagine your top selection, I believe, Lost for words. If this horse can stretch out and go the seven, he'll win. I don't know about him on the dirt. I'm going to take a wait and see. I would love to see the old eight-year-old Obtal get it done for his seventh lifetime win. He does like to come from far out of it. I'm going to single Victor Barboza Jr.'s filly in race number two. She should take plenty of beating. That is the five, Majestic Air, who cutting back from a mile to seven, I think helps her out a bit. Some good connections and a tricky third race remain in that off the turfer. In the fourth, I'll go 1-5. And in race number five, I just think it's a nice complimentary pair of runners using both the four and five. I think I've got the best speedster, Ronnie, in the fifth in the form of the number four, Loving Valentina, and the best off the pace runner in the number five, Cindy's Candy. 
Moving on to the crew, however, in race number one, you've got lost for words after this race came off. And this one must be respected on his ability to score if left alone on or near the lead. You're right about guessing on the off track this afternoon. It's Henry Colazzo. He's going to keep it light. He's got seven pound apprentice, Abby Medina, in the saddle. And my thought process was with the rain, with the track being sealed up, they go to the front and maybe they hold on. That was my uh, yeah. my thinking in, in the open. Yes, if you like lost for words, you're saying I don't care that he's a complete unknown on the dirt maybe he'll love it maybe he'll hate it but i want the horse that's just gonna have them gunning for him i mean he is on the point here by good ways as the controlling speed we'll see what he can do he's clearly in good form now on the other side of the coin is the old war horse in career start number 30 the eight-year-old obtal who can go seven and he ran third once on an off track even though he's more of a turf horse he was third last time he was on an off track at the fairgrounds and he's in the eligible to show more return from their freshening get close to be third and it's simple as that loss for words doesn't like the track doesn't get the distance it sets up perfectly for the two optal i would not leave that one off the ticket and maybe this isn't a true barometer how the main track is going to play all week here at gulfstream but we are coming out of a four-day racing span thursday through sunday in which early speed and really pace was the biggest weapon you could have you did not want to be closing from too far out of it we'll see what happens in today's first moving on to the second will stay at seven furlongs a long sprint for these three and up 12 five claimers the five majestic air we've got a spotlight to show you here on gulfstream today of this one's last out effort no real excuse had a pretty good trip after being sort of hard held beneath jockey amisael jaramillo and ultimately at three to five this horse was just out gained and out finished to the finish line by Big long shot in Joshua's comprise, who kind of, as Joshua's comprise, Ronnie in the pink moves up, kind of got the jump on Majestic Air. Majestic Air, I think this is the spot for turning back to seven furlongs. He proved to me could compete at this level, even though he got beat last time out. But I want to show you a stat after this race ends, because I don't want both the uh, stats to come up, because I found this intriguing stat here for Victor Barboza Jr. going from root to sprint and claim is on the dirt. Six for 23 he's 26% 87% in the money with a dollar 59 return of investments because they bet him so majestic air i know you singled it on your early pick 5 ticket i think it's the one to beat you what happened last time out? It's just one of those cases where some long shot comes running late and nabs him. Yeah, maybe a bit random on that end. And to be honest, I really believe going from a mile to seven eighths will help this horse out, Majestic Air. And uh, Victor Barboza Jr., one of a number of trainers who have gotten into a real groove during the summer months at Gulfstream Park. I think of David Fox coming out of a five-win week here a few days ago, Gilberto Zerpa. I'd like to do a little feature maybe for Gulfstream Weekly looking ahead. Don't leave Armando De La Cerda out there. No, De La Cerda <laughs> certainly in the mix. Yeah, he's certainly part of that high percentage outfit, and Stanley Gold's had a big summer here. But Barboza's been very good, and maybe just time Timed it right with Majestic Air as he has scratched his bigger price, Leverkusen. I'm going to take that as a positive. So we'll go 5-7, Ronnie, you and I, in race number two. A cold exacta for Nicoletti and Blewett. On to race number three, we are off the turf. We go a mile to 16th. Now, this is a first finish line race. Are posts super important in these off the turf mile and a 16 third races? You, you cannot be on the outside. I'm talking a 10 or 11 horse field. Right. If it's six or seven, when you're dealing with it's okay. You know, I think you can get position. You got that short run to the first turn, and you got the short and stretch. So it's about a horse that I always prefer. And if you look at the statistics, it belies it that you have to be sort of towards the inside to run well. I mean, that's the case it's been since we changed the track configuration mm -hmm. here. It does seem kind of like, at least for a newbie like me, maybe a tricky race to ride because you have such a short stretch and a number of guys you'll see will make early moves i even think of gunavera here on sunday afternoon where edgar zayas really down the back stretch entering the far turn really started a ride and to get him up in the game you make a great point because you watch these races it's not like watching races anywhere else at a mile in a 16 because they do start making that move on the turn they're making the move that's normally uh, you know left for the stretch run they start making that move on the turn and of course when you got great riders uh, that know how to win here at Gulfstream Park they know when to make that yeah, move. yeah you've got I mean, basically, there's uh, a lot of talent. I'd say the top five or six guys in the standings are all very good and certainly happy to have uh, Gaffleone, Tyler Gaffleone, uh, back with us today at GP after spending yesterday afternoon. Don't know if he won a race. I didn't look at the charts up 
at Saratoga Race Course. That's the one I bet him in. Oh, you <laughs> were back in your eight, man Gaffleone. Yeah. I was back in my man Gaffleone in race number eight. I was watching it uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, we, of course, were dark here. So uh, taking a look and always got to support our local guys. That a boy. Fire <laughs> up that express bet account and send it in up at the spot. I was happy to see, actually, Blind Ambition get it done in the quick call. You know, there is a sense of uh, pride. I know he's a Todd Pletcher <laughs> horse, and you could say, well, maybe he really doesn't belong to a specific locale. But I look at Blind Ambition kind of being a Gulfstream South Florida horse considering his career started here. If they win here, they're a Gulfstream horse. Yeah, That's absolutely. I like that and we're rooting for them. <laughs> I'm a homer. I am not afraid or ashamed to say it. Rooting for the Florida horses up at the spa. Now, when talking about the third, you've got uh, Tyler and Ralph Nix teaming up and Ralph's another guy who's been uh, going gangbusters of late. They've got the drop down, the number four. Sip my Chardonnay. Not only a cute name with this filly by Bodie Meister, it seems like if she's going to win on the dirt it's going to be in a spot like this in a spot like this and if you got to have a top 10 in names for this summer th this one is one of them sip yeah. my chardonnay -nay. dropping at 35 level returned from that six month layoff to track the pace finished a weakening six it was a maiden special turf event going a mile into 16. ralph nix really sharp with horses making the second start off the layoff 32 percent uh, after that six month layoff bodie meister right away you think should handle an off track and you got the cuvee influence on the dam side that horse love the wet track in his racing days for Steve Asprey said all systems go for a filly who I'm sure they had higher hopes for earlier in her career because she did run pretty well in a monster key race here on January 7th during the championship meet on the turf and what it becomes here with her dropping down is a case of just about everybody else in the field who looks respectable on paper they've already consistently been beaten for the most part running and made in claiming races, and I think number one in that department, although consistent, is the number two One Direction song. Stretching out to a mile and 16th on the, on the wet track today after the, pro I thought it was a promising turf de debut going a mile. She set the pace. She got tired late in that race. She finished third against this caliber competition. Go back a little bit. She was second, sprinting on the slop, two starts back. A and I thought this horse was going to move forward today on the turf after that promising performance going a mile. So maybe this slop uh, uh, will help this horse and uh, scored it. And yeah. our buddies uh, are part of this horse, uh, uh, you know, Happy Alter who spends a lot of time hanging out with us around uh, We love Happy. You know, obviously, he's got a good one. In fact, he's got a layoff horse closely related to his uh, Princess Rooney winner and Curlin's approval coming back later on today in the ninth. That's Curlin's image. And, of course, we await to see what uh, Curlin's approval can do Travers Day, I believe, in the grade one ballerina. So we'll take the drop down in the third. In fact, a cold super for the boys here on Gulfstream today. 4-2-6-7. Wow, <laughs> it's an see easy our game when and you know how. All right, let's move <laughs> on to race number four, Ronnie. Nearly time for the rainbow. That'll get underway in the fifth. We got a seven furlong, three and up, Philly Amare, $10,000 made in Claimer. I'll let you enlighten everybody on the five engraved who found. Again, much like Sip My Shard and Nene, you get the feeling if Engrave's going to win at a short price, today is probably the day. Engrave is dropping to the $10,000 level, stretching out the seven furlongs, chased the pace, faded in that rate, finished fourth. That was a 12-5 maiden sprint, uh, move from the turf to five furlongs on what? A sealed sloppy track. Kathleen O'Connell, Tyler Gaffleone. This is a $120,000 daughter of old fashion that you could hold her for $10,000 today. That's the reality of the game. It's a kind of a moot point and maybe a little irrelevant for the most part when they leave that auction ring. Once they start to trade and run, they're worth what they're worth and they're just trying to win one with this great filly by old fashioned who's going to be favored. She's got to go seven eights though. And I wanted to take a horse who's going to be an okay price, who's had some tough racing luck. She's not the most likeliest winner in this race. The inside runner's still beautiful by any stretch of the imagination. But she got into trouble last time out down the back stretch when the rider took her inside. He had a steady out entering the far turn. And I've had my eye on her simply because she's had some taxing trips. She's going to be an okay price. And much like the horse... Uh, that I picked in the second along with you, Majestic Air. I think even just turning back a mile to seven eighths is going to help her closing kick. And, and this is the Penta Ultimate Race before the Rainbow Six. And by now, you'll be able to see how maybe how the track has been That's playing through the afternoon. So if a horse like this, if they're not coming from off the pace, maybe go like the horse we were talking about in the first race that just went to the lead. Always good to mark down because the fifth race is where that Rainbow Six right. will kick in. Yeah, we'll be paying attention to uh, any sort of apparent track trends that evolve through 
throughout the day and will certainly locked and loaded and tied on for Ronnie's Rainbow Six. It's coming your way after this quick timeout. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve. Give bettors the information they need to win and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing. Hey, South Florida, it's time to get social at sunset. This summer at Gulfstream Park, as the sun goes down, the scene heats up. Join us each week for Twilight Racing Fridays, a fusion of horse racing, food and drink specials, and live performances by local bands. Enter drawings and play horse racing bingo, your chance to win incredible prizes. Live racing begins at 2.15. Admission and parking are free. Visit GulfstreamPark.com for more details. Gulfstream Park, Twilight Racing Friday. Get social at sunset. Four down, six to go as we give you the hearty welcome back from our paddock set studios here at Gulfstream Park. Thursday afternoon, and the good news, Ronnie, the rain is cleared out. It's cleared up just a bit, but we're sloppy and off, and things have certainly cooled down. What hasn't cooled down that Rainbow Six as we chase the carryover? What are we doing? $71,000 plus. Let's show you my ticket. Went three deep, three deep, and you'll see in race number seven, that's that two year old race. I went four deep in there. Pretty much a, a wide, oh, yeah. very wide open affair. And you'll see all the way back in race number 10, dance around, drop into the level, 12 5 level. Came within the nose as the favorite, winning last time out. I think it's the one to beat, so it's the reverse pyramid for me today. $43.20. Yeah, that dance around going to be a big favorite in the last and clearly with that one coming off the turf to the dirt going seven playing to his strengths and it might be now or never for him at a very short price in race number 10 today in fact I singled him in my late pick five which we'll get to in just a few moments after we talk about this group of three and up Philly Amare 6250 claimers looks like you're going to get an honest pace in this race there's a number of horses that like to run and gun and I'm hoping the five Cindy's Candy off that can put in a good run here it seems like she's in good form and she's just a major logical contender given her last couple of races well, here goes the speed again with me, and that's the seven get a room is hoping to save just a little more for that stretch drive after opening and surrendering that four length lead when second at this level and distance last time out. Respect to uh, uh, Monty Thomas, the trainer, Luca Panici, uh, penciled in for the return riding assignment. Zero for one on the wet track. Here's my speed play today. If you see throughout the day they're not running well, you back off a horse like this, but this is just looks like the horse turning back. And, and traditionally, over the years, when we have a wet track, and here speed is always so let's say the track has always been tilted that right. way well it is Gulfstream yeah, Park right, right. I think by <laughs> nature you're looking for early speed exactly. it, is, it does with the configuration the turf as well it just it feels like speed is oftentimes the way to go but we'll uh, again be monitoring the main track today and we'll see I think your top pick with loving Valentina and the number eight horse King of Jack in the race Boy, they're going to be working pretty hard towards the front of the pack. And it might set up for your top pick in there, and that is Cindy's Candy stretching out to a mile again. Is she's the well. best closer, wouldn't you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's won at the distance. She was five wide as the favorite. She was third, going six and a half. Miguel Vasquez. Can't go wrong with Miguel Vasquez no. in the saddle. Yep. So he'll be able to judge that pace. Uh, uh, most of my selections, as you know, when races uh, come up the turf or we get you sloppy. You want speed. I want speed. The man likes speed. And with a good <laughs> pace, we'll get on to the final five races today at GP on this broadcast as we dive into the opening leg of the late pick five and a little rundown. Again, it comes down and hopefully, much like your Rainbow Six ticket, I'm hoping I get to dance around and it's now or never. I wrote it right there, black and white. It is now or never for him after not sealing the deal on a gold rail last time out. He lost a tough one, but he did not win. I'm anxious to see what happens with Sweet Tooth Haven in the ninth today. I thought she'd be favored otherwise, but on a sloppy track, uh, I think that, that title's going to go to the five, Rich Mommy, who is by algorithms, and I think that gives her pretty big edge over Sweet Tooth Haven. We've got the two-year-old race that you use for. There's some guesswork there. And although the six was moved from five furlongs on the grass to the main, this is still a very difficult race, I thought, where you might be able to come up with three or four legit contenders, and that is why I very much used every bit of the three silent drifter 
Mr. French, the six, and the MTO, the number 10, Gold Shark. I used the three silent drifter who has uh, shown a definite fondness uh, for sprinting on the Gulfstream Park turf since arriving from the fairgrounds. But look back, five and a half furlongs at the in the Crescent City, one going on a, slo a, sl a sloppy track, excuse me, Ron Farche with Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. So no, I very just think good that, connections. Yeah, yeah so you I got good connections there for sure. And that horse is a major player. And like you, off that slop win, although it was out in the Midwest at, at Fairgrounds, I left Silent Drifter on top. He's going to need a good effort here, though, because he spots some recency, at least as far as running over the Gulfstream Park main track to horses like Mr. French and the outside runner, Gold Shark. And in the case of Mr. French, you've got one, and maybe five-eighths on the dirt is a question mark. I think that might be the biggest hurdle. But there was no denying that this horse really laid it all on the line most recently in a very gritty effort we're going to look at via our spotlight here on July 13th when claimed Ronnie out of the white hot barn of trainer Jonathan Thomas by Eddie Broom. Claimed by Eddie Broom and uh, this is one of the things that'll always get you and this horse is you know going to turn back the five and furl furlongs after holding on gamely to defeat the 16th condition claimers going a mile that was on that sealed sloppy track. A lot of times horses turning back to a mile to five furlongs people say well they're going to have so much energy left they'll be able to do it but it's not the case you have to I had this horse in the ticket but I'm going to wait and see and put him in second. Yeah, he may get outrun by uh, quite a ways as he makes his five furlong debut on the dirt this afternoon with Edgar Zayas for Eddie Broom. And the 10 gold shark, I think, has got a chance. He kind of freaked three back in late March, got a very fast figure, almost too fast to believe for winning that made in 25. Nothing in his two subsequent races, but they were against much better as he drops in for 20,000. Let's move on, Ronnie, to race number seven. We've got a late pick four staring at us in the face as we come up on this five and a half furlong $25,000 two-year-old made in claimer uh, going into this one blind as of now there's some guesswork to be had my gut says firsters are going to do pretty well in here and it, there's one first that I put on my top on my top of my ticket and so did you in this world of trouble is a versatile son of Ken Thouros. been talking about him all year long what a great sorry is debuting for Kathleen O'Connell I want to show you stand on Kathleen O'Connell two-year-old first time starters on the dirt right here at Gulfstream Park she's six for 26 23 percent 50 percent in the money with that positive return of investment of two dollars and 34 cents and if you have a, a, a doubt and you see a two-year-old race made and claim you don't know what to do, look for Kathleen O'Connell's name. No, she's very, very good at legging horses up. Obviously, that stat shows you. And when it comes down to it, I think the biggest key for any trainer is to set their horses up in races and spots where they can succeed. They all have a, 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 a level as far as their ability goes. And, and she is very good at placing her horses, not just gunning for the moon just for the sake. She's got this horse in for a maiden 25, and you would think a half the money or love, actually, who's been on a major run. She's pulled off two huge ups uh, upsets in uh, some Philly and Mare stakes of late here at Gulfstream Park. You would think World of Trouble is very live. Now, the gelding one inside of him with Miguel Vasquez riding is the six. PK's fast fact. PK Subban? I don't know. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what PK or who the PK. Turned it back into hockey. Yeah, again. this gelding by <laughs> factum is named for, as we have Ovechkin Yager running here on Saturday yeah, afternoon. Yeah, he did. We saw his name earlier this week, and he's actually in first time starter. What a great name that is. Awesome name. We'll look for him on Saturday at Gulfstream. Let's give you the rundown, though, with this uh, firster, who, again, has a very lively work tab. I'm wondering what Vasquez riding off the recent breezes right here at GP, if this gelding might be live first time out and just so you know because I was enlightened from this fact looking this up the sire factum and there are plenty of factums floating around here in South Florida that horse is a half to wharf front so you do have some wow. pedigree punch uh, you would think uh, looking at the sire here this is the dam's first fall and dam the dam I should say was a two-year-old winner and two for six in her racing days in dirt sprints Anybody else you want to give a pop to here? Just the inside horse, Seminole Charlie's making a first, uh, his first start since responding to a drop down in competition with a second place finish. It was a 25 maiden test going four and a half furlongs on June 28th, I believe. And that's just the previous experience angle. All right, let's move on. That's a big field, 11 no scratches, a very dicey race yeah. going in blind in the rainbow and the late pick five. But if you're smart and you're lucky, you're probably doing okay 
as we say goodbye to the first seven and come up on the opening leg of the final pick three. A five furlong off the turf, three and a Philly Amer made in special eight, and yet another live contender on the program for trainer David Fox and jockey Tyler Gaffleone in the form of the eight are precious who's got speed, and I'm wondering if she was helped out to an extent with the scratch that was just announced before we came on the air of the number six, Take a Stroll. I'm looking at her, and the outside runner is the nine who's calling as the best dirt horses going into today's eighth race. Yeah, and I just threw the sweet three Southern Sweetness, turning back to five furlongs, main track, first start, set the pace, but was back in the championship meet back on February 19th. Lemon Drop Kid is the sire, so there's reason to believe this horse will handle the off track. Track. Just going on that back class angle, but might yep. need one after that long layoff. Definitely face the best fields during the championship meet. Dirt, of course, is the main question, and you don't have to, I think, question ability, relatively speaking, on the main track with the eight and nine. And we'll see if the cool call man first, or cool Mariah, takes some money here from Marcial Navarro. Moving on to race number nine this afternoon. It's our featured ninth race, and a good one, I might add. A $43,000 purse for these three and up Philly Amares at six furlongs in the talent department i was willing to give sweet tooth haven the title of the most talented best horse going into this race i don't know where i stand with that in fact i kind of do i think i lean to the fact that even though she's still in and wasn't scratched i just wonder about her affinity on and off track, I really do. She's zero for two on an off track, but if you'd think she would be primed and, and ready to fire a winning salvo, returned from the layup, she made a middle move, she faded, but that was returned in the $75,000 Azalea, David Forks, Tyler Gaffleyome, the daughter of Vineyard Haven, but as I mentioned, zero for two on those wet tracks, where Rich Mommy, the horse you did put on top, has proven that it could run on a wet surface. And look, I was happy in hindsight to see Sweet Tooth Haven via the spotlight we're going to show you on May 14th put any sort of question marks that may have surrounded her as just being a racehorse. She was able to put those question marks to bed with a perfect trip, but a good-looking win back here in the ninth race on May 14th. Now, that day, she defeated the White Hot Money or Love and a few other good horses, like She's Got the Look, who was uh, a big odds-on favorite, and Sweet Tooth Haven just drilled her in this race. It concerns me that she didn't lift a hoof in either the Susan's Girl or the, uh, or the final leg of the Florida Sire Stakes during her two-year-old season on less than fast tracks. But David Fox left her in. I can't really discount what he's doing off a five-win week, and I'm going to use her uh, in the late pick five. But Rich Mommy is by algorithms, and the one thing I know, his whole family loved off tracks. He loved an off track, and I'm going to take Rich Mommy here. And who knows what the track's going to be by race number nine this afternoon. You know, if the sun comes out, it could be fast. It might be, <laughs> and certainly there's a nice breeze blowing. It really is, as far as this time of the year, a very cool day in South Florida, which is very welcomed by the two people, the two dopes sitting on TV <laughs> right now, and I'm sure the horses feel the same way. Here's the 10th as we wrap things up. It's 12-5, 3-and-up, 7 for a long, off the turf made and claimer and it's just you hate to come on here and sing the praises and we'll show you a gritty effort but a tough loss and a tough loss over a gold rail most recently for the number five dance around although this horse was game and defeat could not seal the deal on a very live inside and you hate to sing the praises of a horse who's going to be an overwhelming chalk off a no excuse defeat but man oh man oh man where else do you go in here? That's it. And you see the surface there as you watch this replay. It's dirt, and that's what the last race is going to be yeah. on. And I think you vault, vaulted uh, number five dance around to the top of the list for that reasoning right there alone. And both of us single in. I think it's the right horse in the nightcap. This horse and Gaff Leone is very wise, smart guy who gets it right on the lead. He's going to ride this horse like he's just the best horse in the race, and if he is, he's supposed to he's supposed to win here at around three to five or so in race number ten. We'll talk about Dance Around, his cast of foes in the tenth way down the line, <laughs> but right now we'll take a little time out here on Gulfstream today, and the voice of the GP by the sea, the big man, Pete Aiello, he's coming up in just a few moments with Scratches and Changes.